Here in the South Bay, Rosicrucian Park and the Rosicrucian Egyptian Museum have aroused considerable interest in things ancient, and especially in things Egyptian. The park and museum have been here longer than most people can remember, and it is common for area children to visit the museum in their school outings. The park houses the administration buildings of the worldwide ancient and mystical order Rosicrucius, or the Rosicrucians. But the main draw is the Egyptian Museum. It has the largest display of ancient Egyptian artifacts in the western United States, and it is the only museum in the world designed in the Egyptian style. So why is it that we are so fascinated by mummies and by the objects that the ancient Egyptians put into their tombs? These objects are clearly beautiful, but is there something more that speaks to us? Is there a mystery waiting to be discovered? For me, my favorite place in the museum is the rock-cut tomb replica. In its mysterious darkness, passages, and chambers, something in me begins to understand, and I can't help but feel like an archaeologist myself, maybe even a kind of Indiana Jones, and I want to learn more about these ancient people. If only we could hear from a respected archaeologist what tales he would tell, what discoveries he would relate, and what plans he might reveal. All of this has been a roundabout way for me to introduce the world's most enthusiastic archaeologist. Dr. Zahi Hawass recently gave a talk at the opening of Tutankhamun and the Golden Age of the Pharaohs at the De Young Museum in San Francisco. And in his talk, he stressed the importance of preserving Egypt's ancient monuments. And he talked about uh, the restoration of the Steppe Pyramid, the search for Cleopatra's tomb, his intention to build the world's largest museum in the shadow of the Great Pyramid. And he concluded his talk with a uh, presentation of some scientific evidence which could unravel the puzzle of Tutankhamun's family and the cause of his death. So. Dr. Hawass. Thank you very much. When I uh, wrote this exhibit five years ago, I think, with Jean and Andy to the States, I did say one important thing. There is no free meals anymore. And the reason for that, when we sent this exhibit 30 years ago, Egypt got nothing. No one dollar came to Egypt. But this exhibit, actually, most of the, mon the money is coming for the preservation of the Egyptian antiquities. Uh, <laughs> but to tell you the story back, I was a young man uh, working as an inspector of the pyramids. And uh, Walter Newman and his wife Irene sent by Sir Magnan to Egypt because they want this to be city number seven. And actually, Walter Newman did go to many places. He could not really meet the person who was the head of antiquities in that time who can uh, permit the exhibit to come to the States, to San Francisco. And it was so difficult, really, to make this decision because it already signed that only six cities to take the exhibit. And I met him. I was living in a rest house in front of the Great Pyramid. And he came to see me, I think, to see something in the pyramid. And I did invite him for dinner in that rest house, looking at the pyramid. And he set his hair and because he wants to take this exhibit. And I said, you know, I know the head of Antiquities. He was a, a good friend of mine. I was just like a young man in that time, but I used to know this man. And he was in a charge of sour and light at that time. And his office was just next to the pyramids. 
And I took Walter Newman and Irene to meet Mr. Father Arabi. And in one second, he said yes, and he signed that the exhibit could come to San Francisco at the city number seven. And this is why they invited me in 1977, in November. And I came and I stayed a few days for the first time in San Francisco. And I did go to the old De Young Museum. And what's really uh, strange is that the museum just bought a stolen artifacts from Saqqara. And I looked at it and I said to Inouye, the director, this is a story from Egypt, and if you want King Tut, you have to give this us. <laughs> and he said, of course, he cannot say no. <laughs> he gave me the piece, and I took it with me uh, back uh, to Cairo. <laughs> and this why when I met, when I met John Norman and Andy Namhauser, and I said, I want this exhibit to be in San Francisco, in the new De Young Museum, and to have a very active director, John, I think I'm telling you, I'm, lecture, I'm coming to lecture here in March, and I'm hoping in March, John will tell me that we are going to reach one million person to this exhibit. As I said before, <laughs> that we are making money, and this money goes for the restoration of the monuments. We are building now 19 museums in Egypt. And the largest is the largest museum in the world, in the shadow of the pyramids, that costing us $700 million. And all the 4,500 artifacts in the Cairo Museum of King Tut will be in this museum. And actually, uh, also are building two boat museums inside this building. When I took uh, President Obama to see the sun boat or the solar boat at Giza, the two of us agreed that the building next door to the Great Pyramid do not fit with the pyramid. And I told him about our plans, that we are building, we are going to move this boat as one piece to be in the Grand Museum. We built, we finished the conservation labs. And I'm going to tell you, the conservation labs of the, of the Grand Museum is twice bigger than the De Young Museum. And therefore, you can imagine how this building will be it will be the most beautiful museum in the world. In the same time, we are building Civilization Museum. We are keeping the Cairo Museum, renovating it now. We are building Eknaton Museum in Menia. Uh, Crocodile Museum will be opened in Komombo next week. Beautiful museums all over Egypt. Also, site management program to the Jewish uh, Coptic Pharaonic Monuments. We are restoring nine synagogues in Egypt. We are restoring the hanging the church will be opened in December. We are making site management program to the antiquity sites. Also, we are protecting our monuments. Uh, also, making beautiful program to teach children in Egypt and returning stolen artifacts. Actually, we returned until now 5,500 pieces from all over the world. Uh, we are. We. I have to say, not because I'm in the states that the most important country that helped me a lot in bringing artifacts was the United States, especially homeland security. This beautiful, wonderful officer, James McAndrew, for three years he has been in contact with me because he caught an American who did steal uh, monuments for Egypt and he was able to return to Egypt back 80 artifacts. The only thing, we have a coffin caught in Miami about a month ago. Uh, we, the only thing that I do tell you, and I need you to support me in that, is at the St. Louis Art Museum, a beautiful mask has been stolen from Egypt. And I do have the evidence that this mask excavated in 1952, stolen from the store in Saqqara in 1966. And this man do not want to bring it back, the director of the museum. I wrote to the congressman, I wrote even to the children in the schools, don't go to this museum. <laughs> <laughs> they, made, they made the life of Benjamin, the director, miserable. But he still doesn't want to return this back. But the best news that I'm going to tell you, in one month, no, in, in October this year, I'm sending a letter to the director of Berlin Museum asking and requesting the return 
of the bust of Nefertiti because I found no evidence that the bust of Nefertiti left Egypt illegally. And I do have all the evidence, and of course, I need the support of the media everywhere because this will be the most important piece to come back to Egypt because I do have the evidence now that uh, uh, Burkhardt, when he found this past in 1912, he did hide it and he took it outside uh, from Egypt. Because of San Francisco especially, and my friend Shebu Jean, I was able to bring five new pieces to San Francisco. And this is why this exhibit that you saw in Los Angeles, Chicago, and Philadelphia, here, here is unique because you have five uh, new pieces. What is happening after King Tut 30 years ago until today? Many new things are happening. The most important thing is the CAT scan of the man of King Tut. You remember I found that he died in the age of 19 and he was not murdered because that hole in the back of the head was actually was opened in Dynasty 18 to put the liquid for mummification. But we found this fracture in the left leg. And people thought in that time, three years ago, that he died because of this. But actually, we found evidence now that he died of something else. And we found evidence of the reason of why in his tomb, Howard Carter found 133 sticks. Four of them I examined last week in Cairo Museum. He used them, but actually, I cannot tell you any news about this now, <laughs> because all of this will be in a press conference in about two or three months from now, uh, and I will tell you later at the end of this. But the other important thing, that we are also uh, doing the laser scanning of the tomb of King Tut. I believe that the monuments of Egypt and the monuments of everyone around the world will be completely deteriorated in 100 years. If we do not do action measurement, if we do not protect these monuments, how come 5,000 tourists a day enter the tomb of King Tut and the tomb of Seti and the tomb of Nefertari? I closed the tomb of Seti for the public and the tomb of Nefertari, but I can't close the tomb of King Tut because of the interest of the people. Then what I am doing now, we are doing the last laser scanning of the tomb. We'll make an exact copy of the tomb, and I will make a replica valley. And this replica valley will be able for the tourists to come and maybe pay one dollar only to see the replica valley. But in mind, we are saving this too because of the legend of King Tut. This legend has to continue for thousands of years. If this tomb would be finished, it would be very bad for the legend of this young boy. We are making this replica valley not only with the tomb of King Tut, but also with the tomb of uh, Seti the first and the tomb of Nefertari. These are the only three tombs that are making replica next door to the rest house of Howard Carter that in November I'm celebrating to the world the discovery of the tomb after 86 years. We will make a big celebration in the house of Howard Carter because this house, I'm changing it now to a museum. It will be opened in November and will invite people from everywhere to give lectures about King Tut, and this will be really something to say that this man was a great man, Howard Carter. I did write a book imagining this tomb I found in 2007, and I did excavate the tomb as Howard Carter did, and I found he did an excellent job. Maybe the only thing that he did that I did not like is damaging the mummy because he took the golden mask out from the face of King Tut. Then the other important thing that uh, uh, scanning actually the, the mummy was very important to tell us this kind of news. Also, moving the mummy of King Tut when I found that uh, 5,000 people a day, the briefing and the dust would finish the mummy. This is why I designed a showcase in Germany, protected with equipment to control humidity and heat, and I moved the mummy from the sarcophagus to the coffin nearby that every tourist who come to the tomb now for the first time can look at the left and see the mummy of King Tut, this golden face that I never forget in my life. When I moved this mummy for the first time three years ago and I looked at the face, it was the most beautiful moment in my life, meeting King Tut face to face. And that really when I began to be interested in 
kicked out. I was interested all my life in the pyramids. I entered in the treasury room one day by accident, which Howard Carter found the Anubi shrine. I found that he left artifacts in a basket that no one knows anything about it. I did examine them. I found these are the seals that sealed the tomb rooms with the name of Tut Ankh Atun and Tut Ankh Amun and the seal of the cemetery. And also when I did go to the store in the West Bank Rockshire, I found that Howard Carter left many artifacts in the store in the West Bank Rockshire that many people doesn't know about them. And really beautiful artifacts. But the most important thing that I like is collecting London Times that Howard Carter used to read every day because they gave exclusive to London Times to write about the discovery. And therefore, the other newspaper were interested in writing about the curse of Tutankhamun. <laughs> then I really did bring all this newspaper, restored, restoring them in Cairo, because this is a part of the history of the discovery of the tomb. Uh, I found recently, about two months ago, some blocks underneath a house next door to the Great Pyramid. This block one is showing King Tut smiting an enemy, and the second block saw King Tut shooting an arrow, and his wife is kneeling beside him. And that is a proof that King Tut had a palace at Memphis because he was fond in hunting wild animals. Also, in the same time, uh, uh, all uh, these artifacts, as I told you, will be moved in five years to the Children's Museum. Major important discoveries are happening, I said last night in my remarks, year 2009 and 10 will be the best, the best life in my life. Because you remember three, three months ago, we found this new pyramid at Saqqara that made the number of pyramids in Egypt to be 123 pyramids. We are restoring the step pyramid now, the oldest pyramid in Egypt. And actually, you will not believe how it's fascinating to restore this pyramid. And we have the young man, archaeologist Mahmoud, who's my assistant, which I brought him to see the exhibit and to meet all of you because of his good work in restoring the step pyramid and also the Srapil. You remember in 2002 in Fox TV Live, I did send a robot to reveal the secrets of the doors inside the pyramid. And we found two doors in the northern tunnel. And the tunnel is about 20 per 20 centimeter. In the northern tunnel, we found a third door. July 26, I'm starting with another Hong Kong robot, an English robot, to reveal the secrets behind these doors. And I hope that we'll find something interesting behind these doors. I really think that the tomb of, uh, of Cubes is still hidden inside the pyramid. And these doors are like the key to hide them. The other important thing that I'm searching for the tomb of Cleopatra and Mark Antony, in a temple about 30 kilometers 50 kilometers, 30 miles west of Alexandria. We ex have been excavating in this timber for the last three years. We found statues of Cleopatra. We found coins of Cleopatra. A big, large cemetery outside the temple proving that, uh, that uh, there is someone important is buried inside the temple. Also, I'm excavating right now in the Valley of the Kings. The Valley of the Kings, 63 tombs were found. No one single tomb were found by the Egyptian. And I'm excavating right now in front of the tomb of King Tut, thinking, because the Valley of the Kings, the tomb of Ramses VIII is not found. The tomb of Tutmo II is not found. All the queens of Dynasty 18 were buried there, even Queen Nefertiti. I'm hoping to end my career by making the discovery of the tomb of KV64. And this is really the excavation that I won't stay all my life working there. And we discovered until now major important things, just waiting to discover the tomb. Also, are restoring this unique tunnel in the tomb of city. We entered inside now for 125 feet, and we do not come to the end of this tunnel yet. But I believe that this could be a symbolic tunnel. No, because we found many artifacts in this tunnel. We hope, as people say, that maybe the end of the tunnel could lead us the discovery of the uh, burial chamber of Seti the First. In the valley of the West Bank of Roxbury, you remember, we demolished some houses and we built new houses for the people. And we found only last week six new 
stools, of local stools, were located underneath the houses. The most important thing that I'm doing now is revealing the mystery of the family of King Tut using DNA and CAT scan machine. You have to know, what do we have from King Tut's family? We have King Tut, we have Yuya and Tuya, mummy, we have Amenhotep the third, mummy, we have the skeleton found in KD55 that someone believed this could be a And we have the two fetuses that Howard Carter found inside the tomb. What would the look have? The mummy of Queen T, the mother of King Tut, who wouldn't know? The wife of King Tut, Anche is in Amun. Where is her mummy? The mummy of Nefertiti. And who is the father of King Tut? Actually, uh, one important thing. We have a beautiful result now from the first DNA lab. We took all the uh, results now to the second DNA lab. In one month, we'll see if it's sure or not. And after that, we'll publish everything in a scientific magazine. And I saw to everyone a big, important press conference will be in San Francisco, I hope, and Cairo to announce for the first time that really we solved the puzzle of the family of King Tut, and also we found exactly how King Tut died. But I cannot tell you now, <laughs> I'll tell you about two months from now, and thank you.